the, the, the show. Go ahead. Right over there. I'm going to take a comment about the video. I mean, the picture you're showing right here. It looks like there's a lot of people with other costumes. Are they part of your group? Yeah, it's not really a group, but it is. What if, so, let me give you some background Everyone about Everyone that's in the movie portrayed with you. Yes, anybody from the movie. So what we, what we did is, um, you know, it, it's kind of boring, but maybe, you, you mind if I give you the little background? I'll give you the backstory for us, okay? Um, uh, we did a haunted house for a number of years. Uh, one of the, what we, this haunted house was very much like a Disney ride. You know, we, you actually stood in line for up to two hours and the ride was six minutes long on the train, a haunted train ride. Well, the train had multiple themed train tunnels that we went through and, and each one was a, that was a classic movie theme. I didn't, I don't like the new, newer movies, so they were classic movie themes like Dracula and uh, um, Frankenstein. But one of the movies, because of one of my genres was a Doctor Who film where we had weeping angels that moved and there was a time of life in them. So I had some weeping angels. It just happened to have, you know, doesn't everybody have a weeping angel in the garage? <laughs> so when we, when we closed down the haunted house, um, it was one of the first years that they were running with the con in Salt Lake. And uh, Dan is a friend of mine. And I said, Dan, can we just bring the weeping angels? We'll set them by the car. From that, we ended up um, having a booth at the show. Uh, I, we produced, I actually produced a bunch of characters, the villains from the, movie, from, the, from the TV show. And we actually have a booth where Ben was in the Salt Lake show, and we do that whole thing, and I have a whole bunch of different costumes. But from that, we needed actors to then we what we do. Yeah. Okay, so my haunted house thing, we bring in actors who I have a statue there of a weeping angel, then I bring in a, an actor weeping angel. And you might, you might walk by that booth 10 times and there's just a statue standing there, but then the 11th time, there's an actor there. And she'll animate as you go by and, and the metaphors are very colorful. John, Ar how is his last name? John Barrowman. Barrowman. He was driving by in, he stole Dan Pars and the Comic Con car. He was driving by in the street and I was walking, following as an angel, following the doctor. He stopped the car, got out, took a picture of us. Left we the car in the middle of road, subject. jumped out, and ran over and said, I have a Alexander, picture. we are totally off subject. I am so sorry. So, anyway, so <laughs> you better that, the back one is we had actors, and so then from that, we started doing other actors, and I started dressing them up. So we actually have actors that oh, do my guy is our all son. the crew, we have all the crew, we have a bunch of Thermians, and we do Sarah's Dominion as well. And when you get it all together, it's so large, you can barely walk through a con here. You're so many people, you can't literally walk through Those are all ours, right there. But that's, that's our group right there. Ours. That's all the costumes that I made for this group. So that was a long answer for a little question. You, you had a comment way back there. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know if you already tackled this, but uh, do you do the dual personalities when you're out on the floor? Like, uh, you know, since they're actors pretend, pre pretending to be space heroes, do you ever get into it? In that uh, in that uh, frame, you know, like like sometimes it'd be like you hack steal it, you know, you you see steal it. Yeah, heard us do that. Yeah, time. yeah, completely in character. Yeah, we, yeah, we stay in character as much as we possibly can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we we'll walk around with our service map. Or, uh, I, I was wondering if you guys do more Galaxy or... Quest, Galaxy Quest, or if you guys uh, do more actor. Actor. Where yeah. actors are playing the part. You, now, we, we can talk about this. That's a good point. We actually want to talk about that because in the movie, when, I'm taking much long. With the movie, the actors go from brushed up actors, then they go to actors playing their parts in, in the, in the, on the ship, and then they go to being heroes at the end of the movie, and they're themselves as the heroes. So yeah. we're playing the brushed up actors part. We get super excited to get a gig. Really. Yeah, I was just wondering which, which uh, aspect of that you That is all we're doing. We're doing the active part. So, I love your headpiece. Absolutely fantastic. Do you have a second one with the top of the hair sticking out? No, give him about two hours of walking around. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have the, I've done, I actually have three of these. Um, and it, was a, it wasn't the best. I, I want to redo it. it isn't, I'm not totally happy. 
Yeah, the, the problem is, is I have to match him, and I'm not quite ready to go there yet. Yeah, I actually have the, the disheveled look for us all ready to go, but she doesn't want to be the disheveled look as much as I want to I want, I want my I want my interviews to be more than about just my boots. Yeah. <laughs> go back here. Yeah, so, maybe you go a while you answer this, but what's your favorite part, the funniest part of the week? For me personally, it's when Tommy tries to get the ship out the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a that's a really good question, but honestly, I don't think I can answer that because uh, I, I, I immediately come up with like half the movie is my favorite. Actually, I, I actually yeah. have an answer to that. I was asked that question one time, and I can tell you exactly what my favorite part of the movie is. But I get accused of every time I say it. When he says to Brandon, it's real. And he says, I knew it. <laughs> that is exactly me. I am Brandon sitting there, and I'm watching Star Trek. I say, I knew it is real. That that to me, yeah, that's me. That's actually me sitting there <laughs> saying, I knew it. Because uh, you know, I was a kid. I used to make models. I would think I would, in my wildest dreams, maybe these model cars could turn into real cars. So here, what Brandon is, he's making model ships, and I I, I, per I know perfectly well it's not real. And then he says, I knew it. I knew it is real. That, that was me. That is my moment. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like the guys that already when you mentioned the episode, but I'm so 82, I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. Don't you people watch the show? <laughs> <laughs> so we really are missing Guy. Guy. Guy is our son, and uh, he has a new baby, so he did not come with oh, us. Oh, okay. And he, he adds so much to... Um, he is the to, comic relief. Yeah, he yeah. is comic relief. It's a lot so we have... Uh, Rain Wilson came to Salt Lake this last year. Yeah, do, do, oh. Um, First, we'll do um, the Star Trek. We were at the Star Trek convention, just Harold and I, and it was so much fun to go there and, and just to, to a Star Trek, a real Star Trek, the uh, official at, Star Trek. As Thermians, and we did Galaxy Quest. Um, but when we were there, we were Thermians walking around, and someone came up to us and they said, "Excuse me, we have someone that wants to see you." And we said, "Okay." So we followed her, we just, and it was all the way across the whole hotel. It was at the Rio. It was huge. We just kept following. Has it. anybody here been to the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas? Well, in the past 20 years. So, oh, yeah. okay. I, I, I could walk to the Rio from where I live. Oh, so we were on the other side. We were actually headed out of the Rio to the parking lot, and they, this person from the show grabbed us and then took us clear back around to the other side. You know, so we knew it was someone important. We just didn't know who it was. So we sat there waiting, and she said, wait here. So, of course, we did. And people would take pictures while she was gone. And, and here comes Ray Wilson. That was pretty cool. So he actually had a person from the show come and find us, and then Rick's back because he wanted a, a picture with us. Because he said, you guys are the Thermians. You just, you look and you act like, I remember they taught us to act like Thermians when we were, and if you, I don't know if you're aware, but if you look at the movie, Ray Wilson, that was his first acting gig was uh, Galaxy Quest. And in the movie, he really only made one, he only has one scene that made the final cut, but he was actually in a number of scenes, but they cut him. So you know, I, would, I would feel bad about him and I got cut out of the movie. But at the same time, he remembered, they actually did Thermian school in, in the morning, so they didn't remember how to do Thermians that day when they were doing it. And when he saw us, he said that was what they taught him how to be a Thermian. We were, in the environment of Thermians. And that was, for me, was validation. Like, I mean, you think that, you know, could he walk through the door, you know, kind of thing. But it was really fun for us because he wanted to get a photo with us. And that was. And then we asked for his, too. Yeah. And then, of course, Roxanne's answer was if you, if you, if, if you take a picture of us, we want a picture of you. So that was, that was our. <laughs> and, then there, and then the rest of the story. Yeah. Um, and he gave us the Last year, year before? Last year. Last year. Yeah, last year we were at, uh, in Salt Lake at, at the convention, and lo and behold, he shows up on the roster. <coughs> Excuse me, he shows up on the roster, and he did a panel, uh, and they made, of course, we were all there in, 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 in full, full costume and full, uh, full personality, and they put us in the front row, uh, and we're sitting there, so we're literally, you know, 25 feet from him, and, and, he's, uh, um, and he does, does the whole spiel and does the whole panel. <coughs> And, and when it's time to get up, he notices, he looks down, he sees all of us sitting there and that. He goes, he goes, there's Guy, he goes, Guy Fleegman. 
He goes, there's a guy, that's great. And, and, uh, and then there's, we had like eight thermians, or six, I think it was. And, and he says, there's, I got thermians, and I got a guy there. And I'm sitting next to him. Now, I, I'm hung over Jason Nesbitt <laughs> with my coat and all that sort of stuff. And, and, and he points at me, I'm sitting right next to him, and, he goes, and I'm standing up, we're clapping, and I'm standing up. And he says, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> and there's, there's probably, you know, 5,000 people in, in the room, and he has no idea what character I am. You know, and, and the only reason I had that coat cam because that's the only scene that he had in there was he was Teb, he was the one that handed him the coke in the limousine. And limousine. Yeah, yeah. that was that was the only scene that was left uh, uh, after they got that cut out uh, for him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Then, not knowing that about an hour later I had a photo op with him, <laughs> and so I showed up dressed the same way with my coke can. Then as soon as he saw the coke can again, um, then he then he recognized me and, uh, and so forth. But. That was, uh, that was actually pretty funny. I, uh, I think the whole crowd laughed. I was kind of horrified, but that's all right. Let's talk about meeting some of the actors. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, one of the opportunities that we had, we, um, sorry, okay. we were out of the blue. I decided to go to uh, Silicon Valley uh, Comic Con, which is um, uh, just, you know, for us, that was another trip, just like coming down here, but it was just kind of out of the loop. Actually, I think one of the things was there were a lot of Star Trek uh, guests coming to, to the show, and we ended up going down kind of last minute. And uh, while we were there, we got invited to go to a Galaxy Quest showing in um, Los Angeles. And at the showing, oh, is that Esther running? So, um, so we got to invite it to this. So in LA, apparently they do um, they do these at the DTL, which is the downtown uh, old old um, movie theater. They do um, these monthly screenings of old movies. And they had scheduled a, a screening of Galaxy Quest, and uh, people, you know, bought their tickets and whatnot. And, and when they showed up, it actually turned out to be a screening of Galaxy Quest. And then afterwards, they had a panel up, up on the stage there um, with the director, the writer, the producer, the screenwriter, the screenwriter, and two of the actors from Galaxy. Quest. And because they had invited us to come down, and we, so the people that were had paid to go to the screening didn't know it, and then they invited us, and so they put us on the front row, and then they didn't tell the actors that we were going to be there. They didn't tell the people in the audience that the actors were going to be there. And when we got there, uh, Rico was sitting up on the stage, and he looks down, and there's a bunch of audience <coughs> sitting on the front row, and we're giving them the time. <laughs> He just thought that was so funny that he pulled out his cell phone and he's still he's, he's sneaking pictures of these guys while the going on. Jeremy and sitting on the front row while he's sitting on stage while they're doing this panel, this impromptu panel. During the middle of the beginning During of the, the middle of the, of the panel. And he's like, he just thought it was so funny. But then later on they had us meet the actors. Um, and that was like one of the highlights of my life. I, was, I felt like I was um, in the scene in Galaxy Quest where Baptist are saying this is the highlight of my life talking to, to Jason and his home. And that's how I felt meeting uh, Missy and Jason when we were there uh, the DTLA downtown. It was, it was really fun. So let's tell you a little history about the Thermians. So when Enrique was Enrico was doing his sorry I never can say things when he was doing his interview they said well we're thinking about having some kind of aliens in this movie. What would you do if there was an alien? And what so do you, do you say, who, do, who knows this story? This is my favorite, and this is why I fangirl over Rico's, because of this. Because they were trying to put together the Thermians, and they, they really hadn't settled on what the Thermians were supposed to be. And he came in and read for it, and they were, it wasn't that impressive, and they said, well, thank you. Um, and he was walking out, and he said, you know, I really feel that I should have done this in a different way. Can I reread? And now, how often do you think they'll do that in Hollywood? So he came back and he did it in a his 
fought his the voice that he does, right? He read, he read, he, he reread, but he read it in that voice, kind of, he said it was uh, like the scales or something from singing you, and he did it in that way, and they turned to him and said, that is what a Thermian is supposed to be. And he, so from that moment, from his reading to get the job, he actually invented the Thermian, what a Thermian looks like and acts. And from that, um, that's what developed the Thermian, the way they act. So it was actually his reading that, that produced that style. Right, and then they interviewed Missy Pyle and they showed a video of his screening, or his, his interview, and they said, okay, if, if he's gonna do this, and that's what the Thermians are gonna be, what would you do? Well, I don't know. She starts smiling a different way and talking a different way. And so, so that is where it started. So she, that, that, and that's how she got the job. Now, I was surprised, Missy Pyle, Pyle is tall. She's <laughs> a minister, I'm sure, but yeah. Um, but yeah, that's how she got the same thing. They, they, they had that in their head, what it, what it would, and that's how they got the jobs. And they invented the Thermians, and that's when everything, and so when... And that's why Enrico really... When, when Ring Wilson saw us and said, you guys are being, you are the Thermians that I remember being taught how to be, that, that, that was kind of the validation for the whole thing. But, and being a goofball in front of people. So any other, any other comments out there, questions or anything? Thank you. Yeah. You're among friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, and that's because Galaxy Quest has the right elements of a good movie. In fact, when they were making the movie, the director said that he was trying to make a good Star Trek episode. That was his goal in mind. When he was making Galaxy Quest, it was supposed to be a good Star Trek episode. Good, good movies don't necessarily have to be like big blockbusters. Or that's, spend that's, sixteen billion dollars an episode and all that. I mean, you, and, and Galaxy Quest proved it because just by the the Thermians, they didn't even know who the Thermians were. They let the actors de develop the, uh, the, the right. characters. And they did so, exactly. So yeah, yeah, it's it's the ultimate B sci-fi movie. Um, I, I think Galaxy Quest well. was supposed to be made. I think it had its own life. I think there were things that they were doing as they were producing them or they were making the movie that they thought, well, you know, it's no big deal. I mean, when um, Laredo broke his arm and, and he picked him up and he did the little, oh, I'm kicking the leg. That was, he was goofing off and they kept it in. I mean, he, that wasn't actually supposed to be a cut. That was, they just kept it in. Or there were a lot of things. I find that when, um, when, or when Lieutenant Madison Swears. Now that was written. That was that was in the script. But then they 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 dub it over. But they don't take it out. I think it's perfect. I think it actually belongs in the movie because I think that they start out being kind of a oh we're a really bad Star Trek and kind of a not really a homage. But then they become then they're acting that way, and that's the part where they're acting like it. And so they're they're actually kind of. Um, playing on themselves, oh, that word in this, and then they eventually you know, make their, I think there's an aha moment for everybody, every actor on the screen, and that's why it's endearing for all of us, because they have an aha moment, I had an aha moment, I think that that's, the, it, every actor in the movie had an aha moment, and they became the heroes that they're supposed to be. You had a question right there. Well, not a question, I um, wanted to share my favorite thing of the show. Um, one of my birthday parties when I was younger and had kegs of beer going, we watched Galaxy Quest while drinking. After watching it the first time on the DVD, we re-ran it, dubbed it Thermian. Oh, yeah, wow. there is a Thermian, there is a Thermian. I don't know how they did that, but that was a lot. I don't know how they did it, how they kept it up. Yes. Another thing we want to touch on, we're kind of getting a little short on time, is, is uh, just just certain aspects of the show, uh, everything from mistakes to to uh, um, Star Trek references to other stuff like that. And has anybody got anything there that they want to point out that they saw in the show? Yes. Oh, that was, wasn't that just perfect? 
It's like, oh, like I hold know where the hold button is, right? Yeah. And then later on, it's like, oh, please. Anybody else? Yeah, so, so, now, so that, that brings up the point. Um, I did an unofficial count, and this is not official. There are 33 references to Star Trek in Galaxy Quest. And this is one of them. And that's one of them. 33, there are references to uh, the actors themselves, and there are references to series, and there are references to movies, and there are references to the characters. So and that's one of them. That, that, uh, do you know why he never takes it off? He never, he Why does Dr. Lazarus him? never take off his headpiece? Even when he's at home, he's talking on the phone with Gwen. He, <laughs> had, he, had, he hates being this actor. He's been pigeonholed. Why does he not take off his headpiece? Because he's serious about the craft. He is. <laughs> You're never serious about the craft. That's <laughs> not motivation. Why does he not take it off? Who is it in reference to? It's a reference to a Star Trek character. First, actually, the actor. Literally. It's a reference to Spock. Yes. Yeah, Spock. Because yeah. Spock wrote a book. What did Spock <coughs> book say? I am not Spock. Levin Moon Nimoy said, I am not Spock. Then he wrote a book later on that said, I am, I am Spock. So he didn't want to be pigeonholed, but then he realized, you know, this is who I am. Uh, Alexander didn't want to be pigeonholed, but yet he always had his, he never took off his head. And that is one of the references, one of the 33 that I was able to count, that are specific references. Now, one of the references that we found, it wasn't in any documentation, we just found it out when we were, I realized it when we were at the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas. So when you guys, when you guys go home and watch the movie again, this next time you watch it, see how many of them you can spot. We're not going to go through all of them tonight. Ooh, the okay. Ace okay. Versus. Yeah, see how many you can spot, just Ace Ace get a personal and paper. Has the references on the Star Trek side, some of them. Tell them this one, I think the one that you the one that the, so we were at, a, at the Star Trek, Trek convention, and um, they had, I don't, I, I'm just not very good with that. Monster. No, no, on the stage. It was a, it was a panel. So it was a panel. Right, what's his name? Jonathan Fritton. So he was on stage, he was talking, and he referenced, he was talking about uh, Worf, and he, and he said, old turtle head. <laughs> he called him turtle head, and I realized, that's where Lobster Head came from in the movie. He calls him old, that takes your take care of old Lobster Head. Well, that's where he got it from. Was that's, it wasn't on the movie, and it wasn't anything that was ever said in the TV series, but that's how he used to call Worf was Turtle Head. And so the, the writer knew that, and that was a reference to Star Trek, but it wasn't one that you would have known unless you would have known that's what he called it. And he did it on, in the panel in Las Vegas. It was really interesting. To, to, I guess to kind of come back around full circle again, you know, we get back to the uh, the fact that th this movie is is about the fans uh, uh, and the actors dealing with the fans uh, and, and this very thing, Comic Cons and conventions and all that. That, that really is what it is, and I, I just think the movie um, had to happen in order for the writer, for uh, um, David Howard, who originally wrote it. Uh, to, to get that story out uh, and, and into the public was to, was to tell a story about the fans interacting with a bunch of washed up actors and then you know getting sucked out into space and, and actually having to step up to the challenge and, uh, and, uh, um, and, and do all the, the hero stuff that they ended up doing eventually. I think that was just, just you know, the, 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 the carrier for the real story, which is, which is the fans so and fans. Would they have succeeded if it wasn't for the fans? If, the, if, the, though, if those kids didn't have, oh, uh, we've got the, you've got the schematics for the show. If they wouldn't have had those, would they have succeeded? No, it was the fans that made it happen. It, it is about the fans. It, it, the fans had to be there in order for them to succeed. Brandon speaking. Yes, that's right. We have our jar box here. <laughs> and, and, and that happened because I think uh, um, Jason Nesmith had a bit of an epiphany, you know, getting sucked out into space and then being the back uh, would probably do that to any of us. Uh, uh, but yeah, he had a bit of an epiphany when he realized that, that, was, that, that it was real, you know, they were termites or Dalmatians or whatever, but he was hung over, but it really happened, you know. And so then he called Brandon, you know, and Brandon got the rest of his cronies in there and, and uh, they literally helped them save the day. And that's, 
you know that's that's what uh, I think that's what the story is about is the is the the, the people on the, on on Earth here. Yeah, the fans make the fans make it happen. Yeah, I think that that's one that's where he really says, if it wasn't for the fans, it wouldn't have happened. And that and that's where for me I can watch it again and again because I think yeah it's about me and I'm a, I'm a fan I'm a big fan and and it's, yeah it's it's saying you know we love our fans and so on. To me, they're saying, hey, we love it. Because, you know, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have succeeded. So. Yeah. Is there any more comments? We do have about 15 more minutes. How about you back there? Actually, a question. Um, initially, Galaxy Quest was going to be written and directed by Harold Ramis. Yes. And it was prom and it sounds like it was going to be a darker, scarier tale, but then as soon as Tim Allen came on board, he left the project. He would not direct a movie with uh, Tim Allen. He said no. Any idea what though, any more of what that version of Galaxy Quest would look like or? You're right, it was supposed to be darker and all that. Uh, that's, and I well, that was David Howard. Was, that did it was an R-rated movie to begin with. The, the, the writing was actually as an R-rated movie, but they came back and said no, you better redo it. And I, they dub over at the beginning where you see Laredo, he says they dub over his uh, there's a swear word there, and then there's, there's twins, um, the whole chompers, and the, the person who wrote this should die, you know. <laughs> the, 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 she says the F word at the end, the whole thing. Actually, um, yeah, there, it was a little bit dark. It was written for, they thought it was going to be more of an adult audience. It's, it's really an adult, but I think it's the kid and the adults that makes it uh, for all of us. Sure. But yeah, Harold Ramis was supposed to be the director and did bow out and did not do it. Although I gotta tell you, I love the way he drew. When they were directing this, like you said, it was supposed to, it was, he wanted, the, the director said, this needs to be a good Star Trek movie. You had a comment right there. Yeah, I was, I was lucky enough to actually see it in the theater when it first came out. And I seem to distinctly remember the director saying, this is going to be a good Star Trek movie. And me seeing it, I could not understand that they just didn't get the point of the movie. So, so, so who cares what the critics think? Well, I'm not, okay, I just checked. It might have been my critics because what is, who is Sarah's named after? Sarah's is named after a movie critic who slammed one of his movies and so he named Sarah's Sarah's because of the bad guy. I think there's so many little tidbits like that that are just interesting that we should share. Do you guys want to hear more of those tidbits? Yes. Lobster head. <laughs> like when when um, Jason goes to the bathroom and all the Klingons. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that, that had to have been a crusher. I mean, you know, that, but that was his reality check. You know? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You, you know that really happened. Um, when he goes to the bathroom and the guys are saying, um, yeah, "Can you look at these guys? They're washed up actors." That really happened to Kirk. When William Shatner. William Shatner was at a uh, convention in twenty thirteen. In 2013, and... Not 2013? 2013. No, it had to have been before, because we started being the No, it was... No, you're right. It had to happen back 2003. Man, my But it did happen. William Shatner was at a convention. He went to the bathroom. There were people that were bragging on the fact that these guys were washed up after. So that really did happen to William Shatner. He... And then he actually had a change. Uh, like, wow, these people. I think the same thing that happened with Jason went like, okay. So they got back into shape. So they got back in, yeah. yeah. So then you choose out the kids for no apparent reason. Yeah. And, and then the kids turned right around and stepped right up and helped save the day later on in the show. So you know, once we get in, we get back to the fans and, and, uh, and how cool they really are. You know, because Brandon put that away. Brandon and his cronies, they, they put all that away. And, Went and got the, 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 the coats to get, get them to the chompers and everything else, you know. But, uh, yeah. So, so I mean, there are references in the movie, like the Thermian space. Have you, do you recall the Thermian space when they were there? This is a starport, not the ship. And then in the events, they, as they fly away, it's a, a certain shape. It's kind of an odd shape. That's from an album cover. Um, I can't remember the album now. It was a reference to an album cover. It wasn't. It wasn't a, a planet. It was like literally 
reference to an album cover. It wasn't even a Star Trek reference, it was just a... Actually, there's, there's 33 Star Trek references and there are 10 other references that are just references to the wild things. They, they didn't want to do the Schwarsch open sound on, on Galaxy Quest because they didn't want to feel like they were stealing it from um, Star Trek. So they made a different sound, just so that it didn't sound too Star Trek-y um, when they opened the doors. So they still have just two actors and then they five listening to They had the, the same mechanism, but they didn't, they didn't want to do the sound because there's no sound at all, of course. But they wanted to have a sound, but they didn't want to have the same swoosh. So I can't remember exactly where they stole it. It was actually from like a uh, game or a cartoon or something where they got a sound and it wasn't, it, but it was not Star Trek. That was the, they were actually worried that they were that they were getting too close on too many things for Star Trek and they wanted to. What about the name of the ship? The, the oh yeah, NTS. NTE, -E. does anybody know what that really stands for? That's easy, come on. Okay, that stands for, exactly. yeah, that stands for not the Enterprise. <laughs> but did you notice that he did, was able to get his shirt off? Who else had their shirt off? Carter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Remember lots, the, lots of late nights with Primor and Fangor Beasts. And yeah. You remember the Gorn? Gorn. You remember the Star Trek episode with the Gorn? Oh yeah. yeah. And then guy gets on there and talks about constructing a rudimentary lathe. I mean, that was exactly yeah. what talking about. Or, you know, they but, couldn't quite do a rudimentary cannon because that had already been done, so they had to do a lag. It was something that wasn't exactly the same, but it was, it was a reference to the core. Um, just one of those things where they wanted Anybody else really quick? We still just have just a few minutes. Or, but anybody else have any other comments? You right there. Well, I would rather do something that works for everyday things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like get off the radio, guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody that hates that line. So, yeah. you know, really, really, really. <laughs> so uh, when you watch the movie next time, I want you to kind of keep something in mind. When they're actors, they, when they're washed up actors, they call each other by you know, Gwen, Jason. But when they get on the ship and all of a sudden they're play acting their roles, they start saying lieutenant. And they start calling each other by their rank. And then when they make the next transition to they're being the heroes themselves, she'll notice they're starting to call each other by their names again because they have made that third transition now. They're now doing it themselves. They're being the heroes. And if you watch the movie, you'll see that transition. It's very subtle, but they will make a transition by going from first names to ranks to first names again. And now when you, when you start to hear them call each other by their first names, you know that they have made the transition, that, that, that last transition, to where now they're really doing this and they're the heroes. They're not doing it, they're not play acting in the show. Although I think Guy is still in the show because he's like, he's just, he's just yeah, jazzy yeah. part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so Guy is always, I think Guy never really makes that transition. But you'll, if you watch that, watch for that. You'll see that transition as they change how they call each other throughout the movie. And it does change and you can see the transition as they go through that. Real quickly, bloopers. Anybody notice any good bloopers on there? Uh, I have a couple I'll bring up, but nobody says anything. Uh, Sarah's when uh, when they're in the in the room and they're torturing Mathazar, and he grabs a hold of uh, uh, me, and, and he's and he's uh, and he's looking right in his face, and he's and he's telling him to prepare a tear on it, put a female a little hair through your ship like tissue paper. And, I, I, first of all, I don't even know how they know about tissue paper. But, you know, but uh, uh, when he opens up his mouth, you can see you can see the actor's uh, mouth inside the other. You know, see, <laughs> his whole his whole set of teeth is all on the inside while he's talking. You can see that. And, and down on the planet surface, when they went to the, to go get the beryllium sphere, which is a place called Goblin Valley, just south of Salt Lake City, about 50 miles, they filled up a bunch of it there. But uh, um, there's actually a roll bar for. Uh, for, an old, for a 70s Chevrolet pickup. There's part of the debris where the miners are. It's just leaning up against the wall, but it's a, it's a great big three inch round pipe roll bar that belongs in the back of a 70s Chevrolet truck. Has anybody else noticed anything like that any, anywhere in the show? Yeah, well, well, you know, the robot at the very first of the show is from an old, old sci fi movie, that robot. You don't see that other than in the, in the convention, but it is an old recycled robot from an old sci fi movie. 
I don't even know the movie. I just know every single time I grow up. And I learned one this weekend because we always are learning more, and that was on on Fred's Fred's character. And you'll see him squinting whenever the camera comes right to him. Do you know why he's squinting? The Harold. Well, so are you are you nodded like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, tell us. Um, because his character um, is supposed to be Asian. He's supposed to be Asian, so. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me what. So Tony Shalhoub actually read for Guy. When he came and read, he read for the part of Guy, but he didn't get the part. But they offered him Fred Kwan. And um, but he said, he said, I'm not Asian. I'm not an Asian person. And they said, well, we really want you. They, what they really wanted was somebody who could do stoned. And oh, yeah. Tony Shalhoub could do stoned. And so, um, because of that, uh, so Tony, he said, um, okay, I won't play an Asian guy. I will play a guy playing an Asian guy. And, that's, and Fred Quant's not his real name. Yeah, so he did that. So you'll notice that he never squints, except for in the opening where he, he comes up, it can't be stopped, and he comes up and he does that thing, and he squints. And then later on in the movie where, you'll, you'll see it at least two times that I can recall, where he comes up and he squints, and those are the times when he's supposed to be the Asian, or the actor playing the Asian. And so you'll see him squint, and that's the only time he squints in the whole movie, is because he's an actor playing an actor who's supposed to be Asian. So, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and then if you watch, he actually, his squint is really kind of hard to reproduce. We tried to do it, it's like, wow, it's kind of. It's like Ralph Wood. Right, his eyebrows are up and his, and his corner of his eyes are down, but it's actually kind of a hard squint. Now you know what we do in our hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can attest to that. I've, I've stumbled in on a few things I shouldn't have walked in on. <laughs> All right, any other any questions? Other, right back there in the back, you got your hand up. Oh. Since you're finishing up, can you finish up in character? Yeah, you know, I do have one job. It's stupid, yeah. I know. But I can do it. <laughs> Never give up. Never surrender. Oh, shut up. Ace mean after bones. Five curtains. Five curtains. Now look at me. Don't yeah. get me started. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all for coming. You yeah. have been awesome. Yeah. Thank you.